So we got the love from uh, what else? So it, so it's Israel, Italy. We got everybody. Everybody. everybody across, Russia, bro. Ukraine, this, that, Brazil. My brothers in Brazil. What's up? <laughs> So today on Seeking Wisdom, uh, we're going to talk about our content strategy here at Drift. Strategy? Yeah. All right. Let's bring it. <laughs> You're like, I didn't know we had a strategy. Damn. All right. Drop some so science this, on this me. This one could actually be, this one's actually more about like, uh, I kind of call it like why we do what we do from a marketing perspective. I like that. So, um, you know, we don't always talk about marketing, but last or week. Or Drift. Or Drift. Yeah, we mm-hmm. don't. We don't. But you could go check us out if you want. Um I got a message from somebody, uh, a founder, last week, and they said, uh, you know, they want to know they're they're starting to spin up marketing, and they want to know about how how we're doing content because they they seem to like what we're doing. Uh, and you know what his first question to me was? What's that? He said, "How many conversions do you get from your blog?" Young grasshopper. The first that was the first question. Now, on the surface, that's a good question to ask, right? Like, can you measure it? Can you track it? But. That hit me because immediately to me that felt like the wrong question to ask. And that is exactly the opposite reason. That's the opposite of why we do content at Drift. Mm-hmm. You got to flip it, reverse it. Yeah. Flip it, smack it, rub it down. Yeah. Poison. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're a poison guy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but so this kind of goes all the way back to like earlier episodes. We talked about why we wanted to kill forms, why, mm-hmm. you wanted to, why you wanted us to push us to see if we could grow a business mm-hmm. without doing gated content mm-hmm. uh, and all the gi- on all the gimmicky stuff. Yep. Um, and so you're, you know, this is what I want you to talk about. Your mantra for us, like you said, hey, here's kind of your guardrails for marketing. It's basically like everything to be free. Mm-hmm. And I want all the content to just spread as far as possible. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Why did you want to do that? And why do you think that's so important today? Hmm. Good question. So the reason that, that I want us to do it at Drift and why I think it's so important is because I think we've, I don't think, I know mm. we've entered a new era in SaaS. Okay. Can you hear that? New era in SaaS. Yeah. So the first era, for those of you who were around for it, was pretty much the playbook of a company called Salesforce, right? In B2B SaaS, that was the first era. So basically, it was a movement from on-premise, downloadable software that you bought, from usually from a sales rep or a VAR, to cloud everything. Right, And when you think about cloud-based software, you think of many companies, but especially Salesforce. And in that world, you were moving from, again, on-premise software that was sold by enterprise reps to software that was sold mostly through inside salespeople, yep. uh, cloud-based software. Yep. In that world, there were a few, still few choices. There were more choices than there were in the old world, mm-hmm. but there were still few choices. There were the, the names that you all know today in the SaaS world. right? And because of that, consumers, all of us, if we wanted to buy from those kind of businesses, we had to jump through hurdles, the hurdles that you described, filling out forms, being a lead. I don't want to be a lead. I hope you don't, Dave. (laughs) Don't treat me like a lead. Don't treat me like a lead, bro. Yeah, so Uh, the company had had all the control. The company had all the control and made you jump through all of these hurdles. So so they they say, hey, you you want to buy this for your business. Mm -hmm. You're going to, I'm going to talk to you when I'm ready. I have a couple other calls and then mm-hmm. I'll, I'll get to you when, when you're in my queue. Absolutely. So it was the, it was the typical car dealer model where you walk into, where there's no price transparency, right? You walk into the deal a lot. Even if you've done your research, your little research you can online, you're confused. You have to go through a sales rep. They're dictating the terms. They control the experience. And at the end of the day, you have to follow their process, and then you have to buy a car. Not the car you wanted, Dave. Mm -hmm. Not that silver hot rod that you wanted, but... Whatever's there. Whatever's on the lot. You got to take it. That's all you got, boy. Uh, So that was the old model. That was the 1.0 SaaS model. And the the cues for the SaaS, the clues, I should say, for the SaaS 1.0 model were things like MQLs, Marketing Qualified Leads, Forms, Up the Yin Yang. Yeah. Sales reps having most of the control in the in the in the relationship, and software that you couldn't try before you buy. Right, that was the old world demoware. We are in the new era, the 2.0 era, right? And that is the era that I think that we need to play play towards. That's an era where you hear where you see companies like Slack, yeah, Atlassian, other companies like that, Shopify. These are the new. This is the new era of SaaS, yeah. an era of SaaS where consumers, all of us have all the control. There's not 
ten, there's not one or ten competitors in the market. There's usually hundreds, if not thousands. Right, and you can find, and even of those thousand, mm-hmm. you can go find every single little detail about mm-hmm. any one of those companies without ever having to talk to someone that actually works at that company. Exactly. Yeah. Your expectation is that you can try all of the software long before you buy it yep. through a freemium funnel or through some other funnel that you go through. And the sales rep, in this case, if they do exist, and in some cases they don't exist anymore, they are there to help the person after they decided to right. buy. You, you used a new analogy to me this morning in a message. You said this is the IKEA model. This is the IKEA model. So if the 1.0 version, if you're still running a business that way, that is the, the car lot, the car dealer model, right? The super opaque buying process. We at Drift are the IKEA model. So you come on in. Everything's out for display. Yeah. You sit on that chair. Yeah. Damn, it's comfy. You maybe uh, grab yourself a meatball if uh, you want. Or, or yeah. three. Three meatballs. <laughs> uh, uh, get your, walk around. Yeah. See how this furniture would look right. in your apartment. Try it. Use it. What have you. Then you go downstairs to the warehouse. Then you can either buy it yourself or you can ask for help from a clearly marked person or greeter that you go to and you ask for help in ordering something. And you may, depending on the location, even have help delivering and installing. We are the, Drift is the IKEA model. And in this model where you have hundreds, if not thousands of competitors, you you look a a lot more like offline uh, consumer packaged good companies where you dominate by great product and great brand. And because of the branding aspect of it, we need to get out there and want our content and our information and everything that we give away to be free and openly accessible because we're trying to build a global brand. Yeah, and the thing that we try to do, so the reason why, yes, we want to convert people from our blog for sure, but that's not the number one goal because it goes back to something that you always talk about, which is aligning incentives, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine from a marketing perspective here at Drift, imagine our marketing team, imagine our incentives were conversions from our blog, right? Mm-hmm. Then what would we do? We would gate content. Exactly. We would put call to actions in every Ooh, single post, uh-huh. signing up for, hey, get Drift now. Tell them, We son. would only write stuff about getting Drift right now. Exactly. It leads to bad behavior. It leads to bad behavior. But because this model is today, everything is free, and we want you to try our stuff, the goal from our content perspective is not conversion, actually, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is to get is to, we use our blog, this is the way that, that we think about it, is our blog is like your window shopping for Drift. Mm-hmm. So you're walking down Newberry Street here in Boston, and you see, ooh, that store looks interesting. Come you on know in. what? Next time I'm down here, and I'm interested in buying that fresh pair of Nikes that I want to uh-huh. get, mm-hmm. I'm going to go in the store. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then once, only once you're in the store, mm-hmm. does, we still don't even hard sell you though. At that point, somebody from our team will just come up to you and say, hey, David, let me know if you need anything. I'm here if you need any help. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's how we think about it. Um, and I think that has been you know, a game changer from, from – it's the reason why our stuff has spread so wide yep. already. Um, it's the reason we build the product we do because yeah. we think this is the future. We think the future is about starting those relationships – with your with those customers early, inviting them in through the process and being there as a trusted advisor throughout their entire kind of buying journey and right. customer journey. Right. So the entire goal of us like producing content uh, at Drift is awareness and brand. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why we don't gate it. We want to spread as far as possible. Now I know that there's people that are that are listening and they're gonna say, yeah, but how do you know that works for you? How do you know what's effective or that works for you? How do you measure that? Like. We measure just as many things as everybody else. Totally. So we're still looking at traffic. We're still looking at keywords. Mm -hmm. And we're still able to say of 5,000 people that signed up for Drift this month, here's how many people have read at least one of our blog posts. Mm -hmm. Here's how many have read six of our blog posts. Those are are the metrics. And from a sales perspective, our team is able to say, wow, when I reach out to people who have read six posts, it is such a better conversation. Yep. And, And, you know, the feedback we've been getting from our sales team is like, when they reach out to people who have that, they almost get a free a free pass. They get like a free ask mm-hmm. because they've been with us for so long and we haven't given them the hard sell. Absolutely, because they're rooting for us. They're rooting for us. Mm-hmm. It's an organizational change. And so like here it helps that, you know, you set that from the top down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but I just think like a lot of people that are listening, just 
you know, think about the way that you behave as a consumer, as a person mm-hmm. online, mm-hmm. and think about what are the things that that you want, that you react to. Who are the brands that you follow? Who are the companies that you watch? Who are the mm-hmm. people that you follow on Snapchat and Twitter? Mm-hmm. And try to emulate more of those people. Yeah, and think about if you're a marketer, think about your content and your work assisting, mm. like in basketball terms, doing assist, assisting the conversion, not leading from reading a piece of content to one-click conversion, because that never happens, never. hardly. Um, not in, in the SaaS world, maybe in e-commerce. But thinking about it as a SIS, and it takes me back in time. We had this popular report back in the day at Performable, and it was called Assist. And it was basically built around the same concept so to show what, what, which parts of your content, which parts of the, your website had the most assist in the conversion process. So what did it, what did an assist mean? Like um, they converted, but on the way they did this, this, this. Yeah. So looking looking backwards at the people that had converted, what was the um, content mm. that they had consumed ranked by by the number of times it had been seen yeah. uh, by this this cohort of users uh, over time? So we'd see like, oh wow, look these five blog posts. Um, everyone who's converted or disproportionate number of them have read these five yeah. blog posts. Yeah. No, I think that's an important point because I think I think it's a crutch to lean on it and say like, oh, we can't do this approach because we can't measure it. Mm-hmm. The tools that are available today, you can measure just about every single thing that you want. Exactly. You're just going to have to change the way that you think about it. Yeah, think about it as assist. Think about it as helping. Helping is the new selling. Customer mm-hmm. experience is the new marketing. Those you heard are, it are here, bro. two things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though people try to steal it, that's our stuff. Helping is <laughs> the new selling. It. Yeah. We, I mean, Customer we see experience it. is the new marketing. Yeah. It's amazing when you see that stuff copied. So, it's all right. You. you can copy it. Thanks for the five stars. But just leave a five star. If you copy it, yeah. at least leave a five star review. Come on now. Oh, we got to tell people to subscribe. Oh, damn. You're right. Tell them. One way you can help us out. Yeah beyond leaving that five-star review only is to subscribe to this podcast. You can subscribe on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. There's no excuse. We overcast, got you covered. We got it. Oh, Overcast. We got it all. We got, we got, got all. the tech people. We have you know, regular old iTunes, wherever you want, Seeking Wisdom. Seeking Wisdom. Subscribe. Yeah. Tell a friend. Stop one on, someone on the street. Harass them. Say you got to listen to Seeking Wisdom if you, if you want your game to be tight. That's it. All right. See ya. Yeah. You sit on that chair. Yeah. Damn, it's comfy. You maybe uh, grab yourself a meatball if uh, you want. Or, or yeah. three.